Welcome and welcome back to the OK Grognard Show. It is Thursday, February 4th, 2021, 10 a.m. Central, in beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Today, we are going to look at texts in the game. Books, Librams, manuals, tomes, and the vacuous grimoire. Yeah, there uh, are a bunch of books. That's for sure. It's uh, should be clear by now that I do first edition AD and D stuff mostly. So no surprise, this is coming from. The entries in the first edition Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Dungeon Master's Guide. And it's an interesting, uh, interesting little thing. Ooh, Ritter. That's the artist. This is like from the late 1800s or something. This is classic, but I thought I'd show it off a little more. Kind of cool. It's kind of interesting that the uh, the background I use has an upside down skull, and this one's right side up. Books, books, books. We love books, right? What's up? <laughs> yes, Jason Hobbs jumped into the chat to just warn me that tomorrow night he's planning the demise of my third character in his Kalmata campaign. I've had uh, two thieves by the name of Shardsworth and Sliverbits, both of which, uh, first one died before reaching second level, second one barely reached second level, but was uh, afflicted by a poor arm, left arm, I think his left arm, no, it was his right arm was bad, and then uh, was subsequently brutally murdered by the dungeon master in a fit of rage, obviously, you gotta have a lot of rage to want to kill off characters as often as he does, and now I'm creating a ranger with uh, 3d6 in order, stats, strength, intelligence, wisdom, dexterity, constitution, charisma, of 13, 12, 13, 3 dexterity, 13, 13. So pretty good rolling overall. Well, the only thing that he's really for is uh, is to be a ranger, to have a spear. He's got a minus 3 armor class with a dex like that. He wasn't going to be another thief, which is a shame. I did make him a distant relative on the, on the uncle's side. So he is a uh, a cousin of sorts. I guess he's... Anyway, his name is Slim Flinders the Ranger. Hobbs was kind enough to allow some of the advanced OSC classes into his game. So we're very happy about that. <clears throat> he was against it. And now... He realized, I think, it's easy enough to kill advanced classes, too, so he can he can murder any class. It doesn't have to be just a basic class character. So, we'll see how it goes. And he says, he claims he had nothing to do with it. Spider Demon of the Bronze Gate cast the lightning bolt. Yeah, but that was one of those weird things where you said it went down the line between two squares, so they're five foot wide. Could hit what was actually a 10 foot wide corridor's worth of characters instead of just having it go down a path of straight down to five foot. But, you know, it's your game. I knew I was going to die. I was on my uh, last arm, sorry, last leg as it was. So there wasn't much of a chance anyway. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about texts in the game and i know hobsey's excited about this because he's a he's an old school aficionado who just loves 
handing out tomes of information about his Kalmata setting, which is uh, infinitely diverse and vastly superior with him running it than, uh, than any other. Is that enough? Does that get me off the hook for anything else I said? Anyway, um, we will continue with uh, this. Hey, you know, I chopped up the tables, took some screenshots of uh, my PDF and chopped up the tables so we could look just at the texts. Now, they're from various tables. Right? They're all part of miscellaneous magic, so section 3, subparagraph capital E, or is it section capital E? I don't know how that works. But table E3, 1, the books are on it. Table E3, 4, because they're alphabetical, the librams and the manuals. Tomes are on 5, as is the vacuous grimoire. Or Guimois, I'd say it any way you want. Three books, three Librams, six manuals, and three tomes. Notice, too, when you see it like this, it's interesting because you can see the GP breakdown for all of them is fairly high. 30 only on the Manual of Golems, but the rest are 40 or 50, 48, 43, 5. You've got uh, experience point values of 8, 9, 8, 5, down to 3 on the golems, 5, quickness of action. Excuse me, 8,700, 8,000. So fairly even spread, except for a couple of uh, the lesser ones. And these ones are basic ones, right? These ones are ones you get a... Uh, are not um, subject to a class restriction. This one isn't either. That's 9,000 and 50,000 for GP, the infinite spells, but that is uh, super useful, right? Now, interestingly enough, it doesn't have a M behind it. We'll get into that when we get into the paragraph. But notice these two. Cleric, Cleric Magic User for the manual, uh, manual of Golems. Magic User, Magic User, Magic User. We've got one for the fighter who is sent skill at arms and stealthy pilfering one for the thief and all the tomes, apparently anyone. So we'll go through all of these. Let's uh, have a look at the Book of Exalted Deeds. i got to bring it up on my other screen so it's large enough for me to read. Sup there, Rick. Welcome. Thanks for stopping out. Hobbsy still here, or did he get pissed off and leave? No, he's still here. Okay. Say hi to, say hi to Jason, Rick, Jason, 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 Rick. Book of Exalted Deeds. <clears throat> this holy book is sacred to clerics of good alignment. Good alignment. Reading of the work will require one week, but upon completion, the good cleric will gain one point of wisdom and experience points sufficient to place him or her exactly halfway to the next level of experience. So if you're one point over halfway to a level, halfway to the next level, you gain quite a few points. If you're five points away from being halfway to the next level, you're getting five experience points, right? Clerics, neither good nor evil, will lose 20,000 to 80,000 experience points from perusal of the work. A negative XP total is possible, requiring restoration, but not lowering level below first. So you can have a negative total, but you're still first level. Seems like a, seems like a hole that's really tough to dig yourself out of. Evil clerics will lose one full experience level, dropping to the lowest possible number of experience points possible to hold the level. They will furthermore have to atone by magical means or by offering up to 50% of everything they gain for two to five adventures, losing the appropriate number of experience points as well, 
or gain no further experience. Fighters who handle or read the book will not be affected, although a paladin will feel it to be good. Magic users who read it will suffer the loss of one point of intelligence, ouch, unless they save versus magic, and they, and if they do save, they will lose 2,000 to 20,000 experience points. A thief who handles or reads the work will sustain 5 to 30 hit points of damage and must save versus magic or lose one point of dexterity and have 10 to 60% chance of giving up his or her profession to become a good cleric if wisdom is higher is 15 or higher so if you're a thief with a high wisdom this thing's going to convert you assassins handling or reading the book of exalted deeds will take 5 to 40 hit points of damage and must save versus magic or commit suicide what? Monks are not harmed by the work, nor can they understand it. Bards are treated as neutral clerics. That's the twenty to 80,000 experience point loss. Ouch. Requiring restoration if you go below. All right? Ouch, ouch, ouch. Note that except as indicated above, this writing cannot be distinguished cannot be distinguished <clears throat> by cover or scansion that's a glance over without actually reading it from any other magic book librum tome etc it must be perused that is to say read decently not just uh, not just flipping through the pages this applies also to other magical writings detailed hereafter. Okay. Once perused, the book vanishes, never to be seen again, nor can the same player character ever benefit from perusing the like a second time. So, they are saying there is not only one of these. They are saying that this particular copy of it will completely vanish. And if you should find a second one, then that same player character cannot use that same book. Let's take that back a step. Cannot benefit from it. So if a thief character gets nailed by this book, and then another one comes along, they can get nailed by that one too, because that does not provide a benefit. Book of Infinite Spells. This one's pretty full. This magical writing bestows spell use ability upon its possessor, but upon first reading the work, any character not, al not already able to use spells will suffer 5 to 20 hit points of damage and will be stunned for 5 to 20 turns. That's 10 minutes a turn, right? Thereafter, <clears throat> he or she can examine the writing without further harm. The book of infinite spells contains 23 to 30. That's 22 plus 1d8 pages. The nature of each page must be determined by random die roll. Use the following table. And the table says 1 to 30, blank page. 31 to 50, cleric spell. 51 to 60, druid spell. 61 to 95, magic user spell. 96 to 100, illusionist spell. If a spell is written on a page, roll a d10 for all except magic user spells for which a d12 is rolled to determine spell level. Results of 8 to 10 or 10 to 12 indicate a d6 d8 for magic user spells is to be rolled instead. So you don't lose it but it's going to definitely be a lower one. So this skews everything to lower 
levels, but still pretty wide range, pretty deep. When the level is known, determine a particular spell by random means also. Record page content secretly, and do not, capital letters, Gary, do not reveal this information to the holder of the book until they actually look at it, right? Once a page is turned, it can never be flipped back. And this is kind of cool here. I.e., paging through the book is a one-way trip. When the last page is turned, the book vanishes. The owner of the book of infinite spells can cast the spell to which the book is open, but once per day only, unless the spell is one which the character would normally be able to cast by reason of class and level, in which case the spell can be cast up to four times per day due to the book's magical powers. The book need not be in the actual presence of the owner in order to empower spell ability. So he or she can store it in a safe place while traveling, adventuring, and still cast spells by means of its power. Each time, a spell is cast. There is a chance the energy connected with its use will cause the page to magically turn. Despite all precautions, the owner will know this and possibly even benefit from the turning by gaining access to a new spell. That is to say, I believe, that even if the book is stored somewhere else, the owner will be aware of the page turning and have access to the new spell. At least that's the way I read that. The chance of a page turning is as follows. Spellcaster employing spells usable by his or her class and or level 10%. Spellcaster using spell foreign to his or her class and or level 20%. Non-spellcaster using a clerical spell 25%. Non-spellcaster using a magic user spell 30%. I would go ahead and lump Druid in with Cleric and Illusionist in with Magic User for the sake of the page turning. It's not there, but I think it's implicit because they are subclasses. Treat the spell use just as if the scroll were being employed, including time of casting, as if a scroll were being employed, including Time of casting, spell failure, etc. All right. And the third book is the infamous Book of Vile Darkness. This work of ineffable evil is meat and drink to clerics of that alignment. To fully consume the contents requires one week of reading. But when such has been accomplished, the evil cleric will gain one point of wisdom and experience points sufficient and experience points sufficient to place him or her exactly halfway into the next level of experience. Uh, I gotta run back here for a second. Did I misread that previous whoop whoop whoop? Where is it? There it is up top. There we go. I'm going to make sure I didn't misread this for the mark of the tone. Being clerics. Into the next level of experience. My bad on that one. So if you're even just one point into a level of experience, you'll be into the next level. So you won't, you know, if you're five points shy of a half a level, you'll still be into the next level. My bad on misreading that. Uh, let's see. Book of Vile Darkness. Here we go. You have a cleric who gain one experience into the next level. Halfway into the next level. Clerics, neither good or evil, who read the book will lose 30,000 to 120,000 experience points. Or become evil without benefit from the work. There is a 50% chance for either. 
Good clerics, perusing the pages of the unspeakable book of vile darkness, will have to save for his poison or die. And if they do not die, they must save versus magic or become permanently insane. In the latter event, even if the save is successful, the cleric loses 250,000 experience points, less 10,000 for each of his or her points of wisdom. So your own wisdom can protect you from some of the experience point loss. Other characters of good alignment will take 5 to 30 hit points of damage from handling the tome. It's a book. And if they look inside, there is an 80% chance a night hag will thereafter come to the character that night and attack. Non-evil, neutral characters will take 5 to 20 hit points of damage from the handling of the book and reading its pages will cause them to save versus poison or become evil, immediately seeking out an evil cleric to confirm their new alignment. Reference the Book of Exalted Deed for other details, which was the previous one. And, uh, well, that's all three books. Good morning, Misty. Thanks for coming out. So, now, what do we got here? Um, let's see. On to the Librams. All right, those are a few pages away, so give me a second to dig in here. Mm -mm -mm -mm, horn. Are they here? No, I don't think so. Yep, one page back. Here we go. Librum of Gainful Conjuration. How are we doing on time? 22 after. Well, we may make this a two-parter. Come back next so we can get the second half of these. But let's uh, finish the Librams. This mystic compilation contains much arcane knowledge for magic users. Let's double-check that. All three of these Librams are for magic users only. For benefit magic users only. Much arcane knowledge for magic users, including illusionists. And there's another reason why earlier we could include illusionists in that. Of neutral, that's neutral, chaotic neutral, lawful neutral alignment. If a character of this class and alignment spends a full week cloistered and undisturbed, pondering its contents he or she will gain experience points sufficient to place him or her exactly at the midpoint of the next higher level. When this occurs, the Librum will disappear. M dash. Totally gone. M dash. And that same character can never benefit again from reading such a work. Any non-neutral magic user Reading so much as a line of the Librum will take 5 to 20 points of damage, be unconscious for a like number of turns, and must seek a cleric to atone in order to regain the ability to progress in experience. Parenthetically, until doing so, he or she will gain no further experience. And parentheses. Any non-magic user perusing the work will be required to save versus magic in order to avoid insanity. Those characters, going insane, must receive a remove curse and rest for one month or have a cleric heal them. Heal being italicized to mean the spell heal, which is a fairly high level spell. We got a couple more Librum, so let's look at these two. Librum of Ineffable Damnation. Ineffable is... Uh, hard to define, hard to... Uh, 
you know, I'm going to give you a full. <laughs> Too great or extreme to be expressed or described in words. So hard to define, but because of its awesomeness. There you go. The Librum of Ineffable Damnation. This work is exactly like the Librum of Gainful Conjuration, except that it benefits evil magic users. And non-evil characters of that class will lose one level of experience merely from looking inside of its brass-bound covers. In addition to all the other ill effects of perusing but one line of its content. So, same but reverse, and finally, the Librum of Silver Magic, this mystic text, is the reverse of the Librum of Ineffable Damnation, greatly benefiting, beneficial to good magic users. Most baneful to non-good ones, like all magical works of this sort, it vanishes after one week of study, and the character, having benefit from it, can never be so aided again. So we've got neutral, evil, and good, all being covered by these three Librums. So there you go. Well, I'll tell you what. We're right about at that time, so I am going to say this was part one. We will be back with a part two to cover the manuals, tomes, and of course the vacuous grimoire. Grimoire? I know. I'll learn how to pronounce French words someday. But that day will not be today, apparently. We'll work on it in between. All right? So we've got just those six done today, but we've got six manuals, three tomes, and the vacuous grimoire to deal with next week. We'll get out of the gate a little faster when we do it next week. Although, I'll probably have to take a few moments on Monday to explain how Jason Hobbs killed my ranger tomorrow night. We'll see how that goes. i tell you what. <laughs> absolutely well I want to thank everybody you're very kind for coming out today checking out the show and for checking it out on YouTube if you do this is Twitch so if you're here follow the channel if you're catching up with this on YouTube please do subscribe to the channel give a thumbs up a like to any videos you watch and enjoy, and feel free to leave comments in the comment section. Constructive criticism is always appreciated, and or just join in the conversation. Maybe you've got a story about a time that one of your characters picked up a book, or when you stuffed one in a library for some of your players, because you're a GM, to find. This has been the OK Grognar Show, looking at texts in the game, books, Librums, manuals, tomes, and the vacuous grimoire. And we are going to be back on Monday with some out-of-game stuff, and we'll be back next Thursday with the rest of this. So, thank you ever so much for coming out. And we will catch you the next time. Bye-bye.